hello viewers and welcome to my channel and today's topic is pneumothorax or collapsed lungs so but before starting this topic i would like to request you to like subscribe and share these videos to support this channel and if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com now i come to the topic what is pneumothorax and uh, more commonly it's known as collapsed lungs or lung collapse uh, you know this is a medical term uh, for the collapsed lungs and you know it occurs uh, when the air enters the space around the lungs or uh, the pleural space so the air can find its way into the pleural space when there is an open injury in the chest wall or tear or maybe the rupture in your lungs and uh, uh, so it disrupting the pressure that keeps your lungs uh, uh, inflated now it's known as the tension pneumothorax when the lung wall is affected or the open pneumothorax when the chest wall is affected so these are the two types a pneumothorax tension pneumothorax and open pneumothorax so the causes of the ruptured or the injured chest or the lung wall is included the lung disease uh, injury from the sports uh, or the changes in the air pressure that uh, you experience when uh, like uh, scuba diving or maybe mountain climbing and sometimes the cause of pneumothorax is unknown so we don't know the reason why it happened now the change in the pressure caused by the opening in your chest or the lung wall can cause lung to collapse and the put pressure on the heart and the condition uh, ranges in severity if there is only a small amount of air trapped in the pleural space it can uh, be the cause of uh, uh, it can be the cause in the like of uh, uh, the tension pneumothorax you know and it can often heal on their own and you don't need any treatment and uh, uh, no without any complications and the more serious cause that involve the large volume of the air can become fatal if it's left untreated now the treatment can include uh, like watchful waiting uh, combined with the bed rest insertion of the chest tubes or in more invasive cases uh, the surgical procedures may be required to resolve and prevent the further damage to the lungs or the collapse of the lungs and oxygen may be administered in the uh, severe cases now the next thing is what are the types of the pneumothorax well the two basic types of the pneumothorax are the traumatic pneumothorax and the non traumatic pneumothorax and uh, uh, either type can lead to the tension and the open pneumothorax depending on whether your chest or the wall or the your lung wall was impacted you know so now we will start with the what's traumatic pneumothorax you know Traumatic pneumothorax occurs after the trauma to the chest, uh, in case of road accidents or maybe the sports injuries. So, the trauma can damage these structures, and this allows the air to leak into the pleural space. And the examples uh, include like uh, airbag impact in a vehicle accident, or maybe a hard hit in the sports, uh, stab wound in the chest are the medical procedures that can damage the lungs such as like chest tube insertions or uh, ventilator use lung biopsies and cpr etc you know so these are the common examples and the changes in the pressure from the scuba diving or the mountain climbing can also cause uh, traumatic pneumothorax and uh, the change in the altitude can cause air blisters to develop on your lungs and then rupture and this can cause your lung to collapse now the quick treatment is very important and the symptoms are often severe and they could contribute to potentially fatal complications like a cardiac arrest or maybe respiratory failure and maybe a shock you know so the second type is a non traumatic pneumothorax well the non traumatic pneumothorax occurs after the injury and instead it happens spontaneously you know so there are two major types of non traumatic pneumothorax the primary spontaneous pneumothorax which occurs in the people who have uh, never been diagnosed with the lung disease and the secondary spontaneous pneumothorax 
also known as SSP. So it occurs in the people with the no lung problems. Now, some conditions that increase your risk of uh, uh, secondary spontaneous uh, pneumothorax may include COPD, which is commonly known as uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, so like uh, uh, emphysema or maybe the chronic bronchitis. Uh, number two, acute or the chronic infection like tuberculosis and maybe pneumonia, lung cancer, cystic fibrosis, and the asthma, uh, which, which is a chronic obstructive airway disease that causes the like inflammation, you know, and the spontaneous hemo uh, pneumothorax, uh, which is known as HSHP, is a rare subtype of the spontaneous pneumothorax, and it occurs when the blood and the air fill the pleural cavity without any recent trauma or the history of any lung disease, but it's very rare. The next thing is what are the symptoms of the pneumothorax? Well, the symptoms uh, may appear at the time of the chest trauma or shortly afterwards. And the onset of the uh, uh, symptoms normally occurs when you are at rest and a sudden attack of the chest pain is usually the first symptom, you know. And other symptoms may include uh, like a steady ache in the chest, a shortness of breath, uh, breaking out in a cold sweat, tightness in the chest, and maybe uh, turning blue uh, due to lack of uh, oxygen uh, in the blood and uh, which is also medically known as cyanosis. And the severe tachycardia or the fast heart rate. So these are the symptoms. Now, the risk factors are different uh, for the traumatic and the non-traumatic uh, pneumothorax. Uh, in case of uh, traumatic pneumo uh, pneumothorax, uh, the risk factors may include uh, uh, like if uh, uh, playing contact sports like football or rugby, etc., you know. Uh, performing stunts that may cause damage to the chest. Uh, having a history of uh, like fighting or uh, violent fighting you know and uh, the people at the high risk for the uh, primary spontaneous pneumothorax uh, are those who are young uh, who are thin who are male and the age is between uh, 10 to 30 years which is most active age you know or maybe smokers uh, the people who are exposed to the environmental factors such as uh, sil uh, silicosis, you know, and exposed to changes in the atmospheric pressure and the severe weather changes like mountain climbing, etc. And the primary risk for the spontaneous, uh, uh, secondary spontaneous pneumothorax uh, is having previously been diagnosed with any lung disease and most commonly they are over the age of 40. Uh, the diagnosis is based on uh, the presence of the air in the space around the lungs and uh, you know it can be difficult to detect that air you know and sometimes the imaging tests uh, may be comp like, uh, compromised by the air position between the chest and the uh, lung you know. So the imaging tests commonly used to diagnose uh, the pneumothorax include uh, uh, an upright posterior anterior chest radiograph the chest x-rays. Uh, the second important test is the CT scan, uh, lung sonography and thoracic ultrasound you know. So these are the important tests after the physical examination and also in the medical history uh, your doctor may uh, order these tests to confirm the diagnosis. And the pulmonologists are the, uh, is the specialty for the doctors who deal with these kind of the cases. Now once diagnosed then what are the treatment options? Well the treatment depends on the severity of your condition and it will depend on whether you are you have experienced the pneumothorax before you know and both surgical and the non-surgical treatments are available the number one is the bed rest you know and then uh, uh, draining the excess air and uh, uh, pleurodiasis you know and surgery maybe now you know the bed rest may be uh, referred to as uh, like observation or watchful time and the bed rest is uh, likely the treatment for a case of pneumothorax that involves only small area of the lungs you know and it's not that severe and in this case your doctor will monitor your condition 
on a regular basis as the air absorbs from the pleural space. So the frequent x-rays will be taken to check if the lung has expanded again and your doctor will instruct you to rest to help healing and a vigorous activity might delay or stop the you know, re-expansion process you know so if that's why it's advised that you uh, bed rest and uh, you know it can cause uh, the oxygen levels to drop in the people with this condition and uh, it's called that is hypoxemia so if this is the case your doctor will order the oxygen supplement along with the uh, bed rest now the second uh, treatment approach is uh, draining the excess air so the air will be drained uh, with a needle aspiration or maybe the chest tube will be inserted into non-surgical treatments diagnosed to remove uh, excess air from the pleural space in the chest and your doctor will insert a hollowed uh, uh, out uh, tube between your ribs where uh, and will use like a, either the syringe or the mechanical like a suction device to clear the air from the pleural space you know so the chest tube may remain installed for a few days if the large area is involved or uh, large area of the lung is collapsed you know the, uh, the third approach is uh, pleurodiasis you know uh, it's more invasive procedure for the treatment of uh, pneumothorax and this procedure is used both to treat the collapsed lung and to help prevent it from occurring you know from recurring in fact you know and uh, during uh, this procedure your doctor essentially destroys the pleural space so that the air and the fluid can no longer accumulate in that uh, space you know and the term pleura is means that the membrane surrounding the lung and pleurodosis uh, diasis means uh, uh, is performed to make your lungs uh, membrane stick together so once the pleura are conjoined you know the pleural space disappears and it prevents the pneumothorax which means the development uh, accumulation of the air in that space you know so as there will be no space in fact you know so mechanical uh, 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 like pleurodiasis is performed manually your surgeon gently rubs the pleural to cause the inflammation and the chemical uh, pleurodosis is an other form of the treatment so there are two types mechanical and the chemical and in the case of the chemical uh, your doctor will deliver the chemical irritants uh, to the pleura through the chest tube which cause the inflammation uh, and uh, uh, which makes the pleural space membrane stick together you know and the last approach is surgery well, if the previous techniques like uh, uh, bed rest uh, and uh, drainage of the excess air and uh, uh, pleurodiasis, if they don't work, then the other treatment option is surgery. Now, the surgical treatment uh, is required only in certain cases, in certain situations, you know, and you may need surgery if you have uh, had repeated uh, non-traumatic uh, uh, pneumothorax and a large amount of the air is trapped into your chest cavity uh, which may uh, uh, warrant like a surgical repair you know and uh, there are several surgical types of the surgical techniques uh, for the pneumothorax surgery and the one option is like thorectomy so in case of thorectomy uh, your doctor will create an incision in the pleural space to help your doctor to see the problem and once your surgeon has performed a, a thorectomy then they will uh, decide uh, what must be done to help to heal this you know and during this procedure uh, doctor inserts a tiny camera uh, through the chest wall and the purpose is uh, to help them to see inside the chest and it can help the surgeon to decide on the treatment uh, for to cure the uh, to treat the pneumothorax and the possibilities include uh, like uh, uh, soon blisters closed or maybe uh, closing the air leaks or maybe removing the collapsed portion of the lung which is called as lobectomy so that lobe of the lung is removed surgically okay so this this is this happens in case of the surgical approach you know which is a lost resort anyhow 
Now, and, and uh, you doctor will perform the surgery if the previous techniques or the previous supports don't work, you know, or don't respond. Well, the last thing is about uh, uh, prognosis or maybe the outlook. You know, the long-term outlook depends on how quickly your pneumothorax was diagnosed and the treatment started. So in general, the fast treatment is associated with full recovery. But in severe cases, uh, the late treatment may result in circulatory or maybe in case of the respiratory failure, you know. And uh, if there is a delay in the emergency surgery, uh, uh, may be required, you know. And uh, this is often accompanied by the worst outcomes. So the time is very important, you know, early the treatment starts and there are good chances of uh, recovery. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share these videos to support this channel. Thank you. Goodbye.